From inside the gym at Lemonster High School, we say a very good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Volleyball right here on Rivalry Family Media. We've got a dandy set for you this evening as North Middlesex finds itself on the road battling Lemonster. The Patriots come in with a 6-2 overall record, having a fantastic season. Their 6-2 overall record, good enough for a tie for second behind Groton Dunstable in that tie with North Middlesex in place number two here in Central Mass Pod 5. Meanwhile, Lemonster 1-5 overall, just that lone win early on in the season against Monty Tech. Since then, a bit of a struggle, including a sweep last week against Air Shirley. So Lemonster struggling a little bit here in this part of the season. These two teams matched up on Monday. North Middlesex, a 3-0 sweep in sets, 25-9, 25-15, 25-17 to take the match against Lemonster on Monday. We welcome you high above courtside. Todd Robbins alongside Bill Thomas and Kate Robinson. Happy to have you along with us as we get set for first set action, Lemonster and North Middlesex. And Kate, as the teams start to take their positions out on the field, Lemonster struggling a little bit over the, the last so many the field. weeks. Uh, this <laughs> is that time where they are certainly looking uh, for the, the opportunity. And it's got to start early on serve. It certainly does. They're going to need to get their feet under them. They're really coming into a very difficult portion of their schedule with the next six matches that they're going to have. And they're looking to, uh, to start things off on the right foot right here. And Shayla Wynn starts on service and brings the hammer on the very first serve. Opportunity for the kill catches the outside of the line. That was Leah Hollenbeck. The junior and Bill Thomas, as we welcome you into the broadcast as well, you know, uh, it, based on our experience covering a broad variety of sports, there is nothing harder to break than a struggle streak. And right now, Lemister is dealing with a deep struggle streak, yep. having lost a whole bunch in a row. They have, but uh, one thing that uh, we haven't seen during this struggle streak is the lack of uh, aggressiveness or enthusiasm. The girls are still playing good. You know, they're going after balls, they're diving on the floor, just they're not getting some of those breaks, the close shots, those net tips. And, uh, you know, we saw an odd match last week, the four uh, games, the exact same score, I believe it was, and uh, just some of the oddities the girls have been dealing with, but they've been, uh, they've kept their chin up, they've been uh, very active in practice and, and pregame, and uh, we just got to see that carry through for an entire match. We've seen it in, uh, in for individual sets, but the, as far as completing a match, they haven't been able to do that. And that's an ace for Randy Wood. Alex Kaliri, the junior, opened on serve for North Middlesex two points ago. Picked up two straight points. The libero wearing the red jersey out there. She was lovely, I guess. Really nice. Nice job, a nice group of girls over there for North Middlesex. A, uh, a left-hand server made things a little more difficult, but Lemus was able to get her off of service quickly South as this Park. volley continues. Outside, here comes the strike for Kopech. Long of the line. That's one of the things I saw in warm-ups. North Middlesex has some prolific outside hitters, but Lemonster's bench doing a nice job helping out their back row, letting them know when that ball is out. Right now, communication has been excellent for Lemonster, especially for their back row. There's a kill opportunity from the outside. That was McDevitt, and she catches the line on the kill. And Kate, they're going to the thin part of the floor. They're not trying to kill to the back line. They're trying to kill to either outside line at the midway point. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that comes with confidence in your shot. You know, I kind of equated, I was a pretty good table tennis player, and I used to shoot for the edges. <laughs> and I was pretty successful, and if you're confident at it, you can do it. Sanchez tries the kill to the middle of the floor. Dug out by the Patriots. Here comes the tape clip kill for Chase as she comes from the outside spot. And the service opportunity continues for Tess McDevitt, the junior on serve. Comes right down the middle of the floor and Broomfield digs it out. Broomfield sets it over. And the block for Stanton as LaCreta went high to try to bring the kill and Stanton was able to block it up middle of the floor. This sends the senior libero, Angelina Broomfield, back line for Lemonster on service. And rips the ace down the middle of the floor. Shot for shot, the teams go back and forth thus far here in the early going. Nine points split almost right down the middle at 5-4. Lemonster 
with the early lead here in the first set. Broomfield, back line again. She found Peritano, it looked like, or maybe it was Hill. Hill on the back line. Lemonster on a nice little run here. Here's Broomfield, rips to the back line. Dug out by Kaliri, touched over there by McDevitt. Meza with the response. Kill opportunity, too strong yet again. Lamester's lead up three here as Broomfield's service continues. And Kate, what we're seeing here, and Bill Thomas's point about confidence is good, but what we're not seeing right now is the ability for North Middlesex to adjust for distance. Certainly, yes. The swing over for Lacreta. Broomfield. Set by win, outside, wow. kill there for Perez Soto. I think you're probably going to see North Middlesex only give a few more points to Lemonster, especially right now. They are just finding the holes on the court. Right now you're seeing North Middlesex, especially the, the libero, trying to work out the communication kinks in that back row on defense. Rumfield, back row, got another ace, no response. 9-4, Lemonster froze here in the first set on Monday, losing that 25-9 against the Patriots. Kopech in the match had two aces and seven kills. Lacrate up eight kills. Leah Hollenbeck with three aces and two kills for the Patriots in defeating the Blue Devils on Monday. Those are the key statistics reported to the Worcester Telegram on Monday. Side to set over, they faked the kill to the middle of the floor. Win reaches back, Amosa over her head. Dug out to the outside and killed from the outside. Kopeck never had to leave her feet tall enough. She was able to smack it down over the net. And that's what North Middlesex needed badly there. Broomfield was on a roll. Her service was on fire during that, uh, during that little go round. North Middlesex needed that ball to drop to get back in the driver's seat. Just over, Meza dug it out, and Amosa brought it over the net. It's a nice save by Amosa there. Touch over the middle of the floor. Wynn dug it and sent it back. Back set, kill opportunity, Win popped it up. Nice kill there for Emma Chase, the junior coming from the outside. She got the benefit of the back set from Lacreta, Kate. Nothing much else Win can do about that. That one may have been going out. Might have been able to use a little bit of help from the bench on the uh, on the boundary call, but not much you can do there or there. Yeah, Win got too close to the net and got stuck. Kopech service continues. North Middlesex coming into this one, we set a six and two overall record. Their only two losses came in the second week of this six week season, and both losses they were swept out by Groton Dunstable who is a perfect 7-0 to top the league as Perez Soto comes Beautiful with the block. Beautiful block from Perez Soto there. Her front row play has been exceptional. In the games against Groton Dunstable that North Middlesex ultimately lost, 3-2 in the match in that one that went all the way through five, and then 3-1 in the second day of the match, and that one was on the road. Into the net goes Perez Soto. Grant, Point in possession Grant back Dunstable to the Patriots. Dunstable has been the... Uh, has been the uh, the premier team in this particular pod. So uh, very interesting uh, outcomes in these matches. And that, of course, is Lemonster's opposition for next week, along with South Lancaster Academy. We'll have more on that as we continue throughout the night. This is McNair with the ace. That ace was deadly. One if, point away from drawing the match even. And if you're a Lemonster, points here and there from the opposition, not a problem. It's those big successive runs, those runs of eight, nine, ten points. That's what they really got to watch. And nobody moved between Broomfield and Brady, and it's another ace for McNair. And Coach John Antonetti says that's enough. Ten all, timeout. Well, and this is one of those things, and you hear about it in other sports, Physical errors, okay, those are gonna happen. When you have a mental lapse, when you have an unforced error like the one that we just saw in the back row, 
Lemister came out in this in this particular set and they were on fire relative to, the, to their communication. They were firing on all cylinders in that aspect of their game. Now all of a sudden, you have the opposition start to get into a groove, start to get some points. The last thing that you want to do is have a lapse in, com in communication or a mental mistake like that. So kudos to Coach Antonetti. Take a second, reset, get the girls' energy back up, see if they can uh, force an, an unforced error from North Middlesex or ice, ice the service over here for North Middlesex, get the ball back, and reset yourself. Todd Robbins, Kate Robbins, Bill Thomas, and you. Happy to have you all with us. Facebook.com slash Media Ravelry. Ravelry Family Media Broadcasts here. As the timeout concludes and North Middlesex goes back on Sir. Broomfield dug it out, but got no help in the front row. And Lemonster all of a sudden stung here. And in that situation, you have... Sanchez right there, but Wynn coming all the way across court to try to take that ball, and then nobody goes after it. That cannot happen. Broomfield with the back row dig, and Wynn shoves it over. Mosa, and Sanchez responds with the kill. There was a little bit of confusion on the front row there, but ultimately Lemonster kept their wits about yeah. him. It came loose to Sanchez, and Kate, part of that was about Amosa and Wynn backing yes. off the ball. Yes. Create the opportunity for Sanchez. Well, because Wynn, Wynn, Wynn is very dynamic, and she has a lot of range, and she's, and she's clearly the most aggressive player that Lemonster has. So when you have that happening, sometimes when you're really, you know, trying to work and get, you know, get things accomplished, sometimes you go into somebody else's space and it can become very jarring when that happens and then that lends itself to a lap, lapse in communication. Hannah Collier on serve opens with an ace. Put Lemonster back on top on a 12-11 match. Kill opportunity coming from the back row there from Kopech. And she finds the floor with that one. 12 all. Emma Chase, the junior on service here. Wow. Brings the, oh my, the low bullet right in the grill of Brady. I would need a minute, not gonna lie to you. That Everybody came, comes and checks on her. That came like a shot. That, that came out of nowhere. It surprised all of us. Just inside the antenna, response. Surprised the that that was considered inside the antenna. We thought Surprise. Kate maybe it curved around the antenna a little bit. Official standing right there. Mm -hmm. Doesn't always mean anything. I was gonna say, it's gotta be a difficult <laughs> angle as that one gets hammered nice to the back row. by the back row from Lemonster. Free ball here though. Job swings it back over. over, yeah. Shoved on, Broomfield. Wide of the line. A rare errant bump from Broomfield. That's yep. why it's so important to square yourself to that net because just the slightest miscue can send that ball just off into a crazy direction. Wow, that's an impressive serve. And back over again, and the service aces continue. Emma Chase, the junior, Kate, it almost looks like long toss from a softball player. Mm -hmm. It just looks like she's like high lie esque just yeah. winging the ball over the net. But it looks pretty effortless. Indeed. That one she took a little off of, try to bring it to the middle between the front and back row. Collier was able to respond. What now the swing back over. There. And that one finds the floor. And Kate, I I'm going to push this one at you a little bit because, yeah. of course, we, we heap a lot of praise on Shayla Wynn, the senior. Right now, I feel like she's trying to be everywhere on the floor, and it's throwing off the dynamics. Yep, absolutely, that's exactly right. Right now, she's tr she, this is one of those classic cases of trying too much. She is right now working outside of the parameters. I mean, this might be a simply a, a thing like a coach saying kind of off the cuff, like, I want you to go after everything you can get to. Well, if you take that literally, that means that there are five other people on the court whose space you're going to begin encroaching. And that can become a, a very jarring situation. So you have a situation where, you know, Shayla Wynn, clearly an incredibly dynamic person on the court for Lemonster, but right now, her presence coming into the space of the other five players on the court has become jarring and it, it kind of 
creates that one split second, you know, oh my goodness, there's somebody else in my space, what do I do? And because she's such a dynamic player, her teammates are going to defer to her in a lot of cases. And so when you have that deference to a player like Shayla Wynn, and she comes into your space like that, you have a tendency to back off to let her go after it, and then she's also backing off because she's realizing I'm in somebody else's space. Yep. So you have one of those situations. She needs to do her job, the Bill Belichick, do your job and do it well. And then that, you know, that's what you need to do, not do six people's jobs. I want to come back to a movie reference on this as this one goes wide of the line. This is straight out of Dirty Dancing. Yep. This is my, my dance, dance space. space. This, this is, is your, your dance, dance space. space. You've got it. And yes, I make Todd watch. Dirty dancing. <laughs> Collier, the victim on that one as it comes ripping at the back row. Any chance to have a Patrick, uh, Say Patrick, Patrick Swayze? Swayze reference? I'm all for it. I'm always terrible at remembering Baby's name. And Baby was the character's name. Yep. Jennifer Gray. Thank you. Swung back over there by Wynn. Trivia, baby's given name in the movie. Kill from the outside is a Patriot point. I don't know, her father was a heck of a doctor, later a detective. <laughs> later on, a detective uh, on. <laughs> Francis, I believe, was her given name in the movie. Oh, the net. And that one giveth clips and the net. it taketh away. Indeed, this one giveth with Chase. 22 <laughs> 12, a She's 10 point advantage. A and she is looking to close out the match on this turn of service. I think she started serving at 12 12, actually. And an unforced error. That one long of the line. Melissa no help get the ball from back. the bench there for the back row. They were fantastic at the beginning of this set and are now completely silent. Need that consistent help. Need that back row, that help your back row. Amosa, wide of the mark. Point in possession back to the Patriots. An opportunity two points away from reaching the hill on this race to 25 in set number one. This is Brooke Nelson, the sophomore on service. Wynn scrambles it back to Stanton. Front row over. Tried the block. Now pushed back on her. Collier, Wynn, Wood into the net. And here come the Patriots. They've reached the hill. 24-13, one away from putting this one away in set number one. Broomfield punches it back toward the front row. Double hit, that's gonna end the first set. 25-13, North Middlesex wins set number one here against Lemonster in this match, following a three set sweep on Monday. So four straight sets, Kate, for, uh, for North Middlesex right now. And that is a dominating performance. Dominating, I think, is the word du jour right there. They uh, were firing on all cylinders. The thing is, Lemonster is in these these sets right off the bat, right in the early going. They are in it, and then all of a sudden they have that one lapse, that you know, that one person that comes on serve, they're not able to break it, and then all of a sudden it looks, you know, they're not able to just, you know, regroup and get, you know, get through that. So it's just, you know, things to work on. Not, you know, not a problem. Not a problem. It's a learning experience, and you're going up against a, fi a pretty formidable team. Taking a look at their record, I mean, obviously Groton Dunstable again handled them um, last week, and Lemonster has Groton Dunstable coming up next week, so that's going to be quite the challenge. But you know. You have a, a challenging schedule going forward. You know, work on little things. It's not as if you can you can win a set or win a match in in one play. Work on little things. Build up the momentum. You know, win the service, win a set, win a match. Things like that. You know, build up on it. Because right now, like you said, they're going through a bit of the bugaboos right now, and they need to you know work on and build on the positive things to try to work their way out of it. Bill Caton, of course, proves the, you know, the point, which is, of course, that when you look at a team like North Middlesex that's had such dominating control and Lemonster trying to find their hole to, to get back in it, it really is a, a one-point-at-a-time, one-possession-at-a-time, building it low and slow in order to ultimately get yourself within striking distance. Yeah, low and slow, but you got to start somewhere with a foundation. And they had a couple of blocks in that foundation at the first half of that first uh, set right there, but uh, the wheels came off at 12-12 and uh, North Middlesex found a way to score on 13 of the last 14 uh, serves and uh, closed that match out handily. Got to hope that Lemonster's not uh, 
knocked down and demoralized from the way that first set turned out because uh, could make for an early pack up and night home for the girls if, if they don't get their act together early here in this second match. Double this header second of volleyball set. next week as well. Groton Dunstable travels here to Leominster. As volleyball moves to Monday, that's April the 17th. Oh no, excuse me, April the 12th. I'm trying to read the number and it's blending on me. April the 12th. Uh, 5.30, that we action have right here. Bill Thomas, we have a busy week next week. Preempting yeah. uh, Coach's Corner on Monday. We've got Coach's Corner next week. We've got two volleyball matches, two football games, and then thank goodness. And a partridge and a pear tree. Thank goodness Bill Thomas, Todd and I go on April vacation week because I won't survive that otherwise. I wouldn't be able to go right back to work after that. Well, you know, we all got to pay the price sometimes. At some point. Todd's burning the candle. Second set, and Wynn comes right back. Burying that one over the net, ending the first serve of Alex Kaliri, and now taking point in possession for Lemonster. Yeah, I loved him. I paid my dues for 35 years, so I get the, uh, that flexible schedule. Yep. But now my flexibles, are, uh, my schedule's according to Kate, so it is, it is <laughs> no. what it is. <laughs> Bill Thomas' schedule is according to Samantha Venke. Yeah. Trust me, you've been coordinating. <laughs> Nevard well. goes with the jump kill opportunity. Welcome it was back, dug out Isabella indeed. Nevard. And that point's going to go to Lemonster. She's tanned and she's ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could tan. I just burn. Duly noted. It's no fun. Win. Goes Ooh, low beautiful. and catches the floor. Kaliri tried to get up underneath it and was just a hair too late. Lemonster with a 3-0 lead at the beginning here of the second set. You know, starting fast has not been Lemonster's problem. It's closing out games. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Bill Thomas. We've got to shorten these games to 11. And that one through the block Once of again, Nubard. Five Blue Devils all looking at the ball. Yep. They were all right there. Right now, there's this, there's this, there's this tentativeness that we're seeing. Collier digs it up. Win calls for it. Goes Nobody's long distance, and it. nobody closes the spot on the floor. You know, to your point, Kate, you talked about if Win is told to go after everything. She came from the other side of the court to chase that, while the rest of the team basically stood there and watched her. Yep. So. You know, you wonder if she wasn't told to take charge, but she's kind of a little bit too much youthful exuberance. Yep. And that's one of those things you say something, you know, potentially off the cuff. Oh, and the net giveth again as Kopak rocks a kill. It spins along the net and lands on Lemonster's side. Three all as the Patriots keep the point in possession. Now, mind you, I want when being as aggressive as possible. Here she, Here comes, she comes, long again. distance. Yeah. And the floor it goes. It's one of those things where it's, there feels like there's a connection missing, right? One. There's if, like if, one there's little one connection, one missing, connection in this. missing, yes. Back row, Collier, win, over, and wide. You know, I know Win wants to be aggressive, but one thing I see her doing is abandoning her front row position, sometimes too early. Um, and, and I'm sure the other girls hear footsteps when they know she's coming. Mm -hmm. And the block comes right back for LaCreta. You know, you like that aggressiveness. You don't want her to stop being aggressive. And, you know, if you pull the reins in, she might say, well, I got to stay in my square. Or, and you don't want her to do that. Right. Wood, win, shoved on. Kaliri, front row again, LaCreta. It's spun on the tape and once again, Lands on the wrong side of things for Lemonster. And it, it cannot be overstated how difficult playing pro proximal to that net is. The, it, it's so difficult when something gets tangled, being able to, you have to not only time your body moving, but you have to also time that kind of like give in the net that comes back. It's nary impossible. Absolutely one of the most difficult aspects. And I don't necessarily think the layperson appreciates just how difficult it is when you're proximal to the net and how, you know, how difficult that can be at times, especially when something happens, like if it goes off the tip of the net or goes into that net, very difficult. Coach Antonetti spends the time out down five. And we saw this the last time. Bill has been able to grab <laughs> an angle on This is uh, Mark Roy. It's almost like keeping the pressure on, right? This rhythmic Keep the pressure clapping. On. 
kind of keep it, keep a cover up of what you're talking about so you can have a conversation, but you got that background din of the, of the noise, the pressure, keep your energy up, but still instructing and keeping it within the huddle. And Lemonster tries to respond back with a little rhythm of their own to try to draw some adrenaline in it, what is still an empty building. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's they're not, not a lot of people here. I will say, I was also very impressed during the JV match just how um, impressive the varsity was paying attention to the JV game and cheering on. Kill opportunity this time, the net giveth and the net taketh from Lacreta. Yeah, Once she's uh, back on serve. To, to speak about that JV game, uh, Kate, they were almost like cheerleaders over here in the stands, had their own chants going, yep. their own uh, pump up uh, verses and celebrating points, uh, just like there was a, a group of cheerleaders that were assigned for that purpose. Good job by the Varsity. Mivard goes down line on her first service, and the response comes right back with the outside kill from Emma Chase. And Nivard's going to step out as Valencia Cardona, that's Michelle Valencia Cardona, will check in. Back on serve, here comes Kopech. Swung over by Wood. And then swung right back, this time off of Peritano. Wood responds, and she called herself. Now, if that's not a volleyball <laughs> unique as <laughs> any other sport, they'd go, what? No, that was in. Volleyball, no, that's out. <laughs> well, all right. Call your own foul. Sanchez for the kill. Dug out. Response to the back row, Broomfield. Set over the head of Wynn. Back row popped up there by Kaliri. Amazing defense by the libero for North Middlesex. Wynn gives up the body and keeps it alive. The volley continues. Right back at Wynn from Chase. Now Broomfield, somebody's got to swing it over. This time it was Valencia Cardona. The touch on and a great kill in the middle of the floor. That's Lacreta again. She's been deadly at that center circle. She seems to just know where the empty spot on the floor is every time she has a touch. You notice on that last, early in that volley, Wynn started to come for a ball. Valencia Cardona stayed with it though and Wynn backed off. Allowed Cardona to handle it, continued the volley. Uh, you know, and it, she's learning, she's learning. Well, that's one of those things. If her teammate communicates that they want the ball. I got it. It's I, like an outfielder you in got baseball. It. Yep. You, gotta, you gotta let somebody yeah. know that you have control. Sometimes of things happen so quickly you don't have the <laughs> chance to communicate, but Broomfield try. pops it right back. It's Venn diagrams of responsibility. And there's another kill, this is from Chase. She's moved from that outside left spot to the outside right spot as the rotation continues. Mm -hmm. and. I like that that analogy, the Venn diagrams of responsibility, because that truly, really is what you know what you're dealing with out there, and there is a lot of overlap. And there's another, that an ace for Kopech. Ten points up for the Patriots, 14-4. One set already in their back pocket, looking to add a second. This is Kopech. Sanchez swings it back over. Middle of the floor, <laughs> and what a kill attempt there. <laughs> Bailed out by Lacreta, and ultimately it gets kind of plinkoed into the front row for problems, but wow. Somebody from the next level has got to be watching that play right there, because that's something you see at the college level. Uh, attacking the net with full force and full confidence right there. What a swing, as Lemonster will spend another time out. 15-4, Patriots on top here in the second set. And this Kate has all the makings and trappings at this point in time of being a very short set. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, let's let's make no mistake about it. Lemonster knew what type of a battle they were getting themselves into. All you have to do is look at the standings from uh, from this pod regular season to know what the next three uh, three opponents are going to are going to give you. So this is not a surprise. Um, you know, that they're going up against a formidable opponent. So again, it's about making those small victories. 
you want to come in here, okay, we need to get, you know, at least 10 points in this, in this particular set. We need to make sure that our back row play, you know, is going well. We need to make sure that our communication is on point and that, you know, we're keeping the energy up. Those are the only things that you can control. Beyond that, the, um, you know, the excellent play, especially the outside hitting in the back row, uh, back row defense from North Middlesex, that's not anything that Lemonster can control. Um, right now, North Middlesex is in the driver's seat in this match and they're looking really good. Right to the floor comes Chase. Sanchez did a nice job. She took a little something off it, thought she had found an open spot on the floor. The dig in the middle of the floor and ultimately the kill for Chase from the outside right. Right to the back row goes Kopeck again. Win through the net. San, uh, Stanton with the save. Wood able to respond in tight quarters with the net. Sanchez goes outside kill to the back row. Cleary kept it alive. Over the net and that one is in. Yep. That go over it went the over curtain. and through. Yes, through, over, the beams. through the girders yep. and down. But as long as it does not touch <laughs> anything touch artificial, anything. it is good to go. Wow. It's like a field goal. We've talked about being thwarted by the curtain. The curtain ran a screen on that one. And it looks like, no, oh, double hit double called hit. here on Lemonster. Point goes back. You go back to that North Middle side. I actually thought that that was a four hit volley that it came over on the fourth hit, but I can't be certain about that. that I'd one. have to look at that later. Once again, yeah. Kopech comes Ace. off of serve. No, that one oh, wide that of the line, out. Bill Thomas. That was out. An unforced error seemingly as she was just scoring at will. And that puts Angelita Broomfield on the back line on service. Brings her own hammer to the back row. Finds her opposite number in Kaliri, who can't respond. One of the few, uh, few errors by that back row for North Middlesex. They have been excellent all night long being coached up right now. Broomfield tears it over. Pushed on, Broomfield has to respond, sliding. Win over. And the block. By the net. <laughs> hey, Wood was right there. Clemenster needing a stellar performance out of Broomfield here on serve. Mm. And I jinxed her. And that happens sometimes, and part of I the gig. Her. She was pitching a no-hit until you mentioned it, Kate. <laughs> Hasn't missed a free throw until you mentioned it. It's funny how we come, we come across all those analogies. Mm -hmm. And then it just bites us. It's like, oh, why did I even say something? Because <laughs> that's what we do. Katie McNair, the junior, goes to the back line to serve for the Patriots. What did you say, Todd? We provide the information, you can do what you want That's with it. right, we report you decide, <laughs> and through Valencia Cardona and out of play. Here comes McNair again as the Patriots have reached the 20 mark. Make it 21. Coming into your living room. Indeed, 21-7, the score here in the second set. I think it was a good idea we moved up the bleaches for these volleyball <laughs> matches. That was right about in our lap <laughs> that in the basketball been right season. In our spot. <laughs> Might have taken out a piece of equipment. Indeed. Too. Here comes McNair. Clips Valencia Cardona on its way to another ace. 22-7, Patriots can see the finish line here in the second set. Christine Fournier Kopech says, go Pats. A lot to cheer about for Patriots fans right now. And that one was deflected and is going to count 23-7. McNair takes her time. Picks her spot, she's got an ace. On the hill, once again, the Patriots here in the second set. And 
And they got themselves a win, 25-7 in the second set. Two sets to none, Patriots with the lead in this match. And Bill Thomas, don't know what to say other than uh, the, the domination of that front row play. The control on that front line, the ability, like you said, the confidence to know that they can pick their spot, choose their angle, and just rip it down the line. I was talking to a fellow friend of mine in the officiating community who does volleyball, and he said, he goes, North Middlesex has, for a long time, under coach Mark Roy and staff, had a phenomenal volleyball presence, and it's obvious here. Well, it's it's... It flows through the program, and you can see that they have a good feeder program. These girls didn't learn how to play this just at the varsity level, whether it's at the JV or a junior high level where they get the girls going. But uh, the, the differences I see between these two teams is North Middlesex is playing on their toes, and the Lemonster is playing on their heels. Uh, North Middlesex much more aggressive to the net. Lemons is kind of just waiting for something to happen and hoping it turns out good. And that can always be a difficult place to be. Last place you want to be is playing back on your heels you need, you, in that circumstance. they got to find that uh, injection of energy. You know, we see it in basketball sometimes with a sub. We see somebody make a big play in football. Not really sure how that can happen. We need a couple of good digs and maybe somebody to get on a service run here to, to get that energy back on the Lemonster side of the court. Groton Dunstable travels to Lemonster on Monday, 5.30 start. We got it for you here on Ravelry Family Media. That's Monday, April the 12th. It's senior night here inside the gym at Lemonster High School. We'll have all those festivities for you prior to the first service or at some point throughout that evening yeah. as we uh, as we get the ready for that service. one. We also have, although not on the graphic there, second game next week, South Lancaster Academy comes here to the gym at Lemonster High School, and they will be here on Thursday of next week. Game also at 5.30 right here on Rivalry Family Media, and that will be Lemonster's Think Pink game. Everybody wearing pink in support of breast cancer awareness. A fantastic opportunity to draw that attention. Of course, it's been such a myriad of strange things this year as it relates to, you know, COVID protocols. And yeah, you hate to, to lose in all of that in this international pandemic, all of the things that, uh, that go on every day uh, that have continued to happen despite the pandemic medically. And so a great opportunity here to draw attention to, uh, to the pink uh, game here and draw attention to breast cancer awareness, getting those mammograms and getting them often uh, or as prescribed as the case may be. Catching it early is always the key, we say. Well, it's something. Oddly. Oh, go ahead, Excuse Bill. Me, Kate. Uh, I was talking to the coach pregame. Something near and dear to the coach to have this event. Something he's been building the last couple of years with the girls on the volleyball side. We see it on the football side in October, but we haven't got to, you know, celebrate that. Uh, you know, the, the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and uh, I think it's a great thing he's doing with the volleyball team. 25-13, 25-7, the first two set scores for North Middlesex. Lemonster must win this set in order to continue. Race to 25, over the head. What a sick play by McDevitt. Lemonster responds, but there was two hits in the middle of the floor. Patriots get it back and get their first point of this set. And that'll send Cleary back on. Kate, the touch in the middle of the floor there by McDevitt. Not only over her head, but just kind of tapping it over her head in the process. It's a thing of beauty. Nevart swings it back to the middle of the floor. Touch back on. This is Win. Broomfield steps up. Calling for it and swinging it back across is Nevart. The response what, dug out by Win. That's what Lemonster needs. They need some confident I got it. People that are going after that ball hard over stanton oh. sends it right back what a touch by lacreta lacreta looked like she was winding up for another big swing and instead responded with the knuckle ball lucky not to get a carry there though it was lemonster stanton with a little push on yep. and that in that instance um right there you saw that back row kind of shift up leaving a lot of space deep the lefty cleary clips the tape and got herself an ace Again, the net gets involved to Lemons' detriment. Probably seen that a half a dozen times tonight. Here comes Kaliri. Hammers it, Collier with the dig. Nice little jump serve there. Yeah, Wood's going to bring it over, and she does. The touch, the poke on there for Lacreta. Sent right back. Lacreta, set, response set. Tried to wind up for the swing. 
and the net rejects it. You could just see it coming, Bill Thomas. She had the initial oh, yeah. set, set it to the outside, and set up McDevitt, and then you just see her winding it up. And I'm just going, a oh, little, here little it low comes. on the hit, but she's got the right idea. Not afraid to be aggressive in that jump, jump attack. Nevard goes back on serve for Lemonster. Through oh. the block, that one clips the floor. And right now, North Middlesex is taking advantage of the fact that they have that, you know, that wide, that, that big wind up of outside hitters, and they're also, you know, sending that ball shorthand, just kind of punching it through, and it's keeping Lemonster really kind of off balance on their, de on their defense. Nevard right back off the floor in the rotation. The set, it was a little off target, but still able to reach it was Lacreta. And she found an empty spot on the floor. Off target, but able to avoid the blocker. Worked to her advantage to be able to pick an open spot with a drop shot. It's the adjustment of the body, I think, that impresses me the most. As here comes another ace for McDevitt. It's the adjustment of the body when it's just off the mark left or right. She's already given up going straight up in the air. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, somewhere in midair, decides she's got to lean and is able to clip and bring it back over. And again, when you're playing defense, it becomes so incredibly difficult to respond or react when those types of things are happening. So just it's been, you know, it's been great to watch. Clearly a well-coached squad. Um, and they are, they're putting on a show right now. Lemonster spends the time out here to try to stem this tide. 6-1 here in the third set. We've got comments here on the Facebook stream from a Kopech and a Chase. I wonder who they're rooting for. <laughs> <laughs> we love to see, uh, see the comments on the Facebook stream. Let us know who you're cheering for. And uh, we like participatory broadcast. Second so stream opportunity. Bring it on. It's, it's all good. As long as everybody's nice to everybody. Bring on the second screen experience. Right. That is for sure. Broomfield digs it up, win. Now Sanchez goes back line kill. It's a beautiful spot to put that ball. If you're Lemonster, any way you can right now, any little victory that you can get. And Broomfield today on serve has been excellent. So Lemonster looking for her to carry things here, try to even this, this score back up, put North Middlesex on their heels. Broomfield brings it over. Back set. The outside hit for Kopech. Broomfield kept it alive. Wood swings it to the middle of the floor. It's a blue double point. A rare miss by that back row for North Middlesex. A little bit of a communication issue. They had four jerseys right near everything, everybody. Kaliri is your favorite. I wonder why. Says Mark, Mark Kaliri. <laughs> I love it. Broomfield clips the tape, and oh, she's got, got an ace and a little step reaction to go with it. We got a VU. <laughs> I love it when we see a VU online. Rooting for Sanchez. That's Josette Sanchez, the That's senior. That's awesome. An illustrious line of VU has played volleyball here for, uh, for Lemonster. Set in the front row, win the back set for Wood. Swings it on. Touch oh, over man. the net. Amosa responds. Tried to push it over, did win. The block was there, and it's into the net. Amosa has been doing a really nice job today on those very difficult balls that kind of get hung up in the net. Her defense at the net has been very, very good tonight for Lemonster. Here's Kopak. Valencia Cardona. Sanchez into the front row. Amosa tried to swing it over. Not able to do it. A little scattered right now is Lemonster. But look, they're having fun, giving each other, you know, COVID elbows and laughing and smiling. That's one of the things I love about this sport. They're doing a great job keeping the energy up, keeping the energy positive no matter what. Wood tried to play it over off a set from Wynn, and that one's not going to clear. Kate, I'll tell you, uh, volleyball has probably permanently become a part of the RFM repertoire. Uh -oh. We're already getting requests for the boys' volleyball season coming up in the springtime. Oh uh, so we'll certainly be looking for that schedule forthcoming as we are lacrosse and baseball and softball. Schedules are starting to trickle out. We'll start to put those together. Uh, hold on. I, yes. Lacrosse, baseball. Softball. Softball. Yep. Tennis. 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 Swimming. No, uh, not, not swimming. Boys no, no swimming the, the, this time. Uh, yeah, okay. Boys volleyball. All right, then I'm okay with it. We, okay. There you yeah, go. Just, that was the, that was <laughs> that the, was the, the deal straw. Yeah. There's only so many we could do, right? In one season? <laughs> Once Billy feels the humidity inside a pool, uh. it will be a deal breaker. <laughs> <laughs> Bathing suits optional. That one wide of the Bill line. Thomas. McDemmit. It's a family show. I can always stay off camp. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family show around here. 
And there's a delay as they were a little short. Nevar thought it, she was up for her substitution. Not so much. Right, not quite yet. Kaliri she's gonna, makes the save and into the net. She's probably going to come in on the next rotation. Nevar tending to be that front row player. Randy Wood from the back line. Sets to the middle of the floor. Swung on back over. Nice save by Broomfield Had there. to do it. Throws her body at that back line. Masterful, beautiful. Here's the punch on. That one's wide of the line. And Broomfield knew it off the hand. But again, right now, not getting any help from the bench back there. She's having to make all those 50-50 calls all by herself. That Lemonster bench was loud and in charge at the beginning of this match, and they are silent right now. Need help in that back row. You can't do it by yourself. Kopech swings it over, finds the middle of the floor. Now here comes a change in the rotation here as Felicia Meza will rejoin the action. Randy Wood will get a spell. So you have the defensive specialist coming in for a serving specialist. And then on that next rotation, we're thinking we're going to see Nevard come in to play front row for Lemonster. Mark Roy has his libero step out. Katie McNair in and on serve. Broomfield Can't imagine why. <laughs> sets it up. Pushed on by Amosa. Response into the net. That was Peritano. And now here comes Nevard. Into the floor. She will spell Valencia Cardona and come to, as Kate noted, front row left. And middle of the floor, that one will go. Nice change of pace right there. Blue Devils blockers looking for an aggressive attack move. Nice little drop shot over the top of the tape. Chase, set up by Collier. Now Wynn sends it back over. Popped on, Collier keeps it alive off the hands of Kaliri. The touch sent the right back was Lacreta. We're checking it was Holland back in the middle of the floor. Nice save by Broomfield. Yeah, Broomfield again. Wynn tries to send a little dart over the net. Still alive, pushed on. Collier, great volley back and forth. Amosa. Oh. Dug out again by Kaliri. Still alive, third coming over, and not able to clear the net. Well, Mark Kaliri, I know why Kaliri's your favorite. She's doing a great job in that back row, and you can see she is the little general back there. She's wearing that red shirt for a reason. She's that defensive specialist over there, and she has been all over the back row, making things happen for her team on defense. Libero out for Lemonster and a change in the front row as well as Stanton comes back in. Samantha Brady on service. Brady keeps it alive. There's a race for the ball and the floor. Lemonster battling back into this third set. They gotta have it. Race to 25, got a win by two. Down two sets, nearly in the match. This is Brooke Nelson, the sophomore, on service. Ace to the back row through Collier. A little uncertainty there by, uh, by back row play. Who is that? Uh, number Collier. Collier. I think she thought it was going to go out, and it might have, and uh, went for it at the last second. Those are tough when they come waist high. Difficult decision to make there. Chase sets to the outside, win the block. And the front row could not return. Lemons to reach his double digits. They're within five and back to the top of their service rotation. Shayla Wynn on serve. Randy Wood back in. Out goes Felicia Meza in the rotation. Back row, Kaliri. Pushed on, middle of the floor, Broomfield. Wood, little dump over the net. Push back on, looking outside, Kopech. 
got the line. The lead is six for Mark Roy's Patriots. And they're back to their service rotations top as the southpaw, Alex Kaliri, the junior, goes back on serve. Oh. And there was a abort and the whistle there. All righty then. Looked like there was a little issue. Player wasn't ready or what have you. So they're now ready. Kaliri comes back with it. Wood got it set right back from Stanton and pushed it over. Outside, through the block comes the hammer of Lacreta. Lemonster responds though. Nevard comes back over with the jump. Back serve, pushed on. Back over the net, Stanton. Now Lacreta, outside Kopech. Broomfield with the double touch. Pushed on, Nevard, the dump with the left hand, kept alive. And into the net goes Kopech. lemonster has got a point. And those are the types of small victories that if you're Lemonster, you're really proud of, especially on defense. The block uh, coming in really, really handy there for Lemonster, and they're just sticking with the volleys. Not always coming out on top of them, but they're keeping this particular set close, and they're having fun while they do it. Nevard on service. Dug out by Kopech. Stanton over the tape. And then Sanchez couldn't respond, tried to go overhead. That ball was already down to waist high. Wasn't going to be able to make it with the response. Service changes here. And Kate, just not long enough runs for Lemonster on service today. It's the combination of not long enough runs, and then they haven't been able to break the prolific servers that North Middlesex has had coming up. Everybody lays out for that <laughs> one, both Broomfield and Wynn find each other on the floor to exchange okay. grins. Nothing is for lack of effort, that's for certain. There are, there are more girls throwing their bodies around the floor, trying to make something happen for their team. And it's one of those situations that North Middlesex is finding the open space. Or, I think even more importantly, they're having, the, they're, they're catching Lemonster kind of lulling into certain areas, and they're not necessarily getting back to their set positions on defense. So there's a lot of space in certain areas in the back row when these outside hits come from North Middlesex. So North Middlesex is putting on a show right now for everybody to take a look at. And it's been, they're a really fun team to watch. Uh, clearly very well coached, very disciplined. Their defense in the back row has been especially exciting for me to see um, because of course I'm very much vertically challenged. <laughs> and of course everybody's looking at the outside hitting in the front row, but what makes that happen is solid defense on the back row. And that has been kind of their hallmark. Their service has been you know, exceptionally consistent. They've gone on long runs. Um, it's just been a real treat to see. It's been a lot of fun this season to get to know some of these teams that are a part of this pod that regularly play each other. Remember, this grouping, this pod number five, is a normal league for Lemonster as that one goes down the line and in. And that's what I mean by that space that North Middlesex is finding. Go ahead. And uh, as, it, uh, as it turns out, Monty Tech got added into that group as well this year. It's made for a great little regional rivalry here between these schools. And what I think I've been most impressed with as I, I look at this is Sanchez unable to clear the net has been really, when I look at the team like Hudson, who was here a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago, and we were impressed with Hudson, but maybe, you know, they had smaller handful of players. Yep. Now I look at the response here from North Middlesex, and they've got a, a larger group that shares the responsibility. And I, and I think to myself, they're, they've got matching six and two records, Hudson and North Middlesex, right. in that two spot, as there's the kill for Hyde in the middle of the floor. And then I think to myself, what is Groton Dunstable going to look like, who's perfect thus far and tops the league? I've just been so impressed with the top half of this pod and getting to see them, as I have really with the even nature of the, the rest of the pod as well. Yeah, it's been it's been a treat to see kind of the progression of the, the, the various teams now that the now that the records have essentially been set in stone, now that we know what it is that's coming in every week, it's kind of it, it becomes more and more interesting to see. But you know. We know what we're getting next week with uh, with Groton Dunstable, so that'll be that will certainly be a treat to to see what they have up their sleeves. But I, it's been such a joy. Every single team um, opponents that we have seen, you know, obviously we're most closely connected with the girls here, here in Lemonster. But every other team that we've interacted with, everybody has been so nice. Everybody has been just so welcoming and so nice and so accommodating. It's just been 
it's been a breeze. It's been it's uh it's not difficult to call these types of matches when everybody's just nice and happy to see you. You had promised me a very welcoming community in the uh, in the volleyball I world. I told you there was a vibe. I in would the say we have world. we have not been disappointed That's as right. the paperwork continues down on the Well, you the know they floor. extended <laughs> tax season. They had to call up the accountants. <laughs> I thought we were going to get through one game. Nope. Oh, Bill <laughs> Thomas. Hey, two and a half uh, uh, matches. Uh, you know. It Two and a half sets, quickly. I mean. What yeah. are we playing? Sets and matches. Sets and I still don't even know what Sets it is. are the shorter <laughs> games. Matches is the yeah, bigger. Uh, yeah, Two, and half, Two and a half sets into it before we broke out the paper. Indeed. But it's got to have this. As we, if you've been following along all season long, this is my favorite part of the game. <laughs> when the I notary think, public gets out. I think North Middlesex has been playing this game with the legal players. In this, this, oh, uh, stop set. it. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> So I, I think maybe they should just at least forfeit this one. No, yeah. no, no. Let's go back. Try to, to keep it alive. I just want to play some. Yeah, let's play. Oh, yeah, we finally play. get a rhythm. I, I'd say trying. let's I play. Want, let's right. play a little more. Let's I want to play one. I want to see one more set. The two of you are tough. Mark Roy is directing traffic. So we're having a substitution, uh, a substitution, clerical substitution issue right now. So, uh, how do they fix this though, Kate? Can they go back and? They're going to fix it. Take they'll away. You can't take away points, obviously, after no, the fact. No, I think that they'll I mean, fix it and they'll, play lose, is played on. they'll lose the serve. If it's if it's against North and Middlesex, That will be the they'll penalty. Fix, they'll take the serve they'll, away. They'll lose the serve. I got you. I was wondering if there was some ramifications to creating a mix-up or, or, you know, whether it's intentional or not. Mm. And the conversations continue. Take the number from box they, 49. No, no, wait, wait. <laughs> We've Add talked, it to but, box number but we've 197. talked previously <laughs> how important this is a situation where you have a manager for a team. Uh, in, in most you know, high school situations, there are managers that, that help out with teams. But in volleyball, the manager's position is just as important as any person out on the court. They are so integral because it's such a paperwork-laden situation. They are just as important as members of the team. And so we continue with no seeming change. Stanton swings it back over. Lemus has got a point. Lemus got the point, but there didn't seem to be any penalty assessed either. No, so once maybe, they but I didn't out. see anybody move. Uh, nobody yeah, nobody no moved movement. in the rotation, so yeah. he must have figured it out. 21-12 is where we stand here in set number three. North Middlesex up 2-0 in the match. Looking to close things out. Lemons turns back on serve. And... Mike Griffin at the official scorer's <laughs> table says we've got if a ever, substitution over there. If ever we could get a remote wireless microphone, For we Mike. need to get a, no, an official's table mic. So I, we just, can I would want Mike Griffin. See what's Mike. going on. <laughs> That'd be fun. Touch over, Sanchez the block. Good response for McDevitt. Huh? We've got a whistle. Lemus who's getting the point. Two hits on the front row. Lemonster needs a long, sustained service here. Todd, I'm not going to tell you the comments coming on the stream. They've been far too nice, and I don't <laughs> want your ego to be inflated. Oh, now, 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 now. It just goes you mean to show. Inflated her. Inflated her. Uh. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> tough room. I just made that word up, but it fits. <laughs> tough room. Ooh, tough room. Broomfield, back field. line. Ace. They gave it to her. Right on the line. Lines in. Seven points the difference. Service continues for Broomfield, the senior. She has been, of late, their most consistent server. And she does like moving around. I know she's been swapping sides here on a serve. That basketball hoop would drive me crazy as yep. she peels that one just out wide of the line. 22-14, Patriots look to close it out. Stepping back on serve, it's Olivia Hill, the junior. I keep thinking about whether the, the nets were down when I played. They must have been. They must have been. They're long of the, you know, the back they line, and, you know, so they're long of the service area, but it just, obviously school is back in session, so that, uh, that means the basketball hoops are being used here at the gym at Lemonster High School, phys ed classes and such. And that one not able to clear the net, so Lemonster point in possession there on serve. Randy Wood, the senior. Somebody got to draw a line in the sand here in order to keep this ongoing. That's Kaliri. Touch back row, kill, wow! McDevitt. Kate, we mentioned it, not often that you see it, but jeez, from the back line. That one came hard and strong over the middle of the floor. Yeah, with authority. North Middlesex here, looking to finish things out fairly quickly. Getting some new, uh, new numbers in. 
And Julia Hyde's going to take over service within two of the finish line. This is Meza. Now Amosa blocked, sent right back though. The scramble, Patriots settle it down. Push it on over, that was Nelson. Outside win for Sanchez, skidding dig for McDevitt. Swung back over from the other side of the floor by Nelson. This is win for Amosa. Over the net, trying to put together a response. The response right back. Broomfield sets it up. What an exchange. Amosa gets blocked. The two hits as it comes back over. North Middlesex is within one. Wynn wants a call for a deflection. She's not going to get it. Valencia Cardona through Sanchez, wide of the line. And that's game. the game and the match. 25-15 Patriots win in straight sets. As they take the back line and congratulate and thank one another for a fantastic competition. North Middlesex in straight sets, 25-13, 25-7, 25-15 to close out the match on a beautiful afternoon. No doubt why this 6-2, now 7-2, they played like a very confident team, very aggressive, and uh, the only way I can describe the way they played, Kate and Todd, they in, played on their toes and they played forward, everything in, forward. Indeed they did, uh, and a big win for North Middlesex to continue their record to 7-2 overall. And from there, they, uh, they will go from 7-2, Bill Thomas, uh, and on to their next match next week. They've got a, a pair coming up next week with Hudson. So that's so, uh, certainly two, on six deck and two, for them. Uh, seven and two teams Potentially two 7-2 teams I'll have there. a Hudson made out this week. But uh, two, uh, two very, uh, I'm sure, well uh, matched up teams after we've saw we've seen both of them we know how good Hudson is and uh, I think we saw a slightly more aggressive more I don't know how to describe it other than they play forward jumping yes. into balls not just standing there for the spike of the serve the jump serve the always moving towards the net adding that little extra emphasis to every shot and it pays off and I think that's reflected of their record. Indeed it does, and indeed it has thus far. Kate, as you see, has vacated her position. Got to go do a little of that educator thing uh, that people have. Uh, Damn have work gets in the way. Those, huh? day, those daytime yeah, jobs. Those daytime you know? jobs. <laughs> what a pain in the neck. So Billy and I will I take in the rest of the like. way. <laughs> uh, in, indeed. Lemonster, meanwhile, Bill Thomas, they've got a couple coming up here next week as well as the schedule, of course, has gotten shuffled up a bit, but it will be Groton Dunstable for two next week. Monday at home as the home and away games now switch positions for Lemonster. So they'll play Groton Dunstable at home on Monday, then they'll travel to Groton Dunstable on Wednesday. Then they'll close out their season on Thursday of that week with South Lancaster Academy here. And of course, a couple of important events, senior night on Monday against Groton Dunstable, and then follow that up uh, on Thursday with their Breast Cancer Awareness Think Pink game coming up on Thursday of next week. So a lot of fun in that action. We'll have it all for you here on Ravelry Family Media, and we're looking forward to it. Facebook.com slash Media Ravelry for the live premiere coverage. And then on the other side of that, games available same day delay on YouTube, youtube.com. And you can search Ravelry Family Media, like and subscribe today. Anytime we go live or post content, you'll get notified and be able to be in on the action. And Bill Thomas, what a, what a treat it has been thus far. Obviously, we're far from over. Still got a couple of volleyball games left. Again, we're already getting queued up for boys volleyball season to, uh, to come as Maybe well. Maybe we'll, get get, we'll get one in there somewhere along the line, hopefully. Why the heck not? That's, well, that'll be the interesting part, of course, of the, the spring season. Sports returning to more of their normal mode of operation. So there's a lot more games going on all at the same time. So creativity will be a must in juggling the schedule. We'll do our very best here on Ravelry Family Media to bring you a diverse uh, schedule. And let's give some credit to the ADs. I know they've been working yes. with each other and you know, conversing with us, not that they're gonna let us drive this schedule, but to allow us to bring maybe a game or two that we might not have. Because of that traditional 3.30 and four o'clock start that yeah. varsity teams always have in the spring, that, uh, you know, the traditionals that we cover, the basketballs, the footballs, they're all traditionally played at night. But, you know, these become a little more challenging in the spring. We're going to bring as many uh, and as much diversity to our springtime broadcast schedule as we can. Indeed. Want to try to, uh, to see them all as best we possibly can, at least once or twice in that overall process if we 
possibly can as well. Next week, Kate alluded to it, a busy week for us, this broadcast team all around, on our diverse series of media partners. Of course, we mentioned the two volleyball matchups we'll have for you. Remind you about those again as we come toward the wrap-up. Yep, that's Kate coming back in the corner of the screen. <laughs> that was a quick trip. I was going to say, so much for those teaching responsibilities I told everybody you were on. Nobody can hear you. we gotta, we got to get the microphone. We'll wait, though. I decided I'm going to use the laptop. You guys will be wrapped up by the time I need to log on. Uh, indeed, I, I, I was going to say, there's a, there's a possibility. So Ooh. a chance to, uh, to wrap that up. We were talking about other programming coming up next week. Whole bunch of football between now and then. We've got a Friday night game as Lemister travels to Wachusett for that action. We go over to our radio partners, WPKZ AM 1280, 105.3 FM. The K-Zone, WPKZStream.com, on live and the world over. Uh, we'll have all that action for you of Lemister traveling to Wachusett. 620, the countdown to kick off this Friday night, followed by a 7 o'clock kickoff there for that one. Then we're on into next week where we again, we'll get back to the volleyball action in a moment. We've got a pair of football games in that coverage next week. Levenster action up first. That game also on Friday night as Levenster gets their first home game on the football season playing host to Doherty at Doyle Field. That's next Friday in that action. And that game will be played at 7 o'clock. Countdown to kickoff, 620 WPKZ for the coverage. Lemonster TV, our partners on the TV side, will carry the radio play-by-play -play along with the video action. Comcast Channel 9, Verizon Channel 32, and Lemonster.tv for that coverage as we go on into and through the football season. Then a radio doubleheader next week as we've got St. Bernard's traveling to West Boylston. Games to be played at Shrewsbury High School, who's playing the home away from home, for the Lions of West Boylston to close out that regular season for St. Bernard's as well. So that one exclusively on AM 1280, 105.3 FM and WPKZStream.com. We'll have that for you there. The Weekly Coach's Corner with Lemonster Head Coach Devin Gates comes up next week, preempted because of volleyball coverage on the Monday. Look for it on Tuesday. Tuesday next week for that one at 8 o'clock. Facebook.com slash Media Ravelry. Hey, we're not done the fall two season yet. We just said we're running out of it as we're moving our way forward. But a whole lot more coverage to come your way in the intervening weeks as well. Kate, Billy, and I had an opportunity to wrap this one up, but a chance for a last word on what you saw here today, a dominant performance from North Middlesex. Mm -hmm. But Lemonster much more in this match mm -hmm. than it was, I would say, on, on Monday. They did have the single-digit set again in set number two. But otherwise, they seemed like they had it. They seemed like they had it. They seemed like they rise to the level of their opposition. They gave it everything they had and just didn't quite have enough horses, so to speak, to make it to the finish line. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been nice to see the the energy Lemonster keeping their energy up, so remaining positive throughout difficult you know difficult sets. That's always great to see. That comes that trickles down from the top down. So that's you know your captains, that's your coaching staffs. Those are those are the people that are that are setting the tone for the rest of the team. So great to see that. Um, you know you're going up against a, a situation where you know what you're getting when a team like North Middlesex and then next week Groton Dunstable comes in, but they're working on uh, on little things here and there. Keep the energy up, keep the positivity, go out there, and most importantly, have fun. I got to chime in real quick, yes. Todd. I don't know if people are paying attention on a split screen, but I've focused in on uh, um, uh, Broomfield over there and uh, and, uh, and win. win. And just take a look at Broomfield's knees. <laughs> I mean, it's just incredible. Tell me the, you know, the effort that girl puts out game in and, and – uh, game in and game out, and uh, that says it all. I was going to say, in, that in, says in, it all. in a sport where you can actually tangibly see, I would say other than boxing, you can see I've never seen. I mean, yeah. you can absolutely I mean, see the effort. The physical uh, beating that these girls that They put taking. themselves through yeah. in order to and be successful. And that's with knee pads. She's wearing knee pads. I, I, I already told you, Bill Thomas, yeah. they're not thick enough for no. me to even consider flying around on uh, this floor to uh, to say the least. But Just incredible. It, uh, it is it is what heart. it is. That's all heart. That's right all heart 100% of the time. No No question about that. Fantastic afternoon of volleyball here on Ravelry Family Media and so much more to come as the action continues on into next week. We mentioned it's a two-for-one week as Groton Dunstable comes here to Lemonster's gym. 5.30 for senior night right here at the gym at Lemonster High School on Monday, April the 12th. We'll have that action for you. Be on the air a little bit earlier in order to get that senior ceremony in before the first service coming up 
at 5.30 on next Monday. And then we mentioned the action again. Coming up Thursday, just a couple of days on later, Lemonster hosts South Lancaster Academy, also a 5.30 first service on that one on Think Pink Night. So we'll all wear our pink, whether here or at home, and cheer on your favorite team for that one. Always fantastic to see those nights and great to be able to be a part of this one. For Bill Thomas, Kate Robbins, I am Todd Robbins saying thank you so very much for joining us. We're once again the final score today. North Middlesex a winner in street sets, 25-13, 25-7, and 25-15. To improve their record to 7-2 and two overall, Lemonster Falls to 1-6 and six with the loss. Until later on this week on the radio side of things when we bring you Lemonster High School football. For Bill Thomas, Kate Robbins, I'm Todd Robbins. Thank you for so much for being a part of our family over the last couple of hours. And we look forward to being with all of you again next week. So long, everybody.